All right, welcome back. Uh, so we're going to continue here uh, with our discussion of non-Newtonian fluids. And again, uh, I've drawn here the familiar now uh, uh, scenario where you have a fluid between two surfaces that are separated by a distance h. Uh, the bottom surface is stationary and the top surface is free to move at a constant velocity v. And our starting point again is Newton's law of viscosity which relates stresses in this case the shear stress uh, on a surface whose normal is in the y direction due to the flow in the x direction to some property of the flow. And we showed in the last video how we could express that either from a fluid mechanics viewpoint uh, as the uh, velocity gradient or from more of a materials viewpoint as this uh, strain rate or a shear rate uh, for the case of this pure, purely shearing flow that I've shown here. Uh, the question you may wonder is are, are these the same? is the shear rate equal to the velocity gradient? And the answer uh, is not exactly. Uh, they're related, but they're not exactly the same. And I'll, I'll tackle that question in the, in the next video. Uh, but for the case of the shear flow, uh, the simple flow that I've shown here, actually they are equivalent. Uh, they are equal. Uh, so these two, uh, these two formulations are interchangeable for this, for this particular setting. And so, again, just to remind you, if the coefficient of viscosity, uh, which is the, the proportionality constant between stress and velocity gradient or shear rate. If that viscosity coefficient is constant, uh, we often uh, denote it with the Greek letter mu, and we say that's a Newtonian fluid, or the fluid exhibits Newtonian behavior. But often uh, this is not constant. Often this uh, can vary, and it can vary with characteristics of the flow it can be a function of the shear rate or the deformation rate uh, in the flow. And fluids that exhibit this property where the viscosity is not constant are called non-Newtonian fluids. So we already told you that, but we're going to look a little more deeply now into different kinds of non-Newtonian behavior that, that, uh, that we can see. So again, um, here I'm showing a plot of viscosity coefficient as a function of shear rate. Right, so that's basically I'm plotting um, eta as a function of gamma dot now, and I'm considering again that we have this this kind of flow that I've shown here. So if the viscosity is constant as a function of shear rate, then again that's a, a Newtonian response. That means that this coefficient is just a constant. Another case that we could have uh, is where this viscosity value decreases as a function of shear rate. So as you apply uh, sharper velocity gradients or faster flows in general, uh, you may observe the viscosity to decrease. And if that's the case, then this is referred to as shear thinning behavior. Then on the other hand, you could imagine the opposite if you have higher velocity gradients or in general faster kinds of flows then uh, you may observe that the viscosity increases with shear rate and that's called a shear thickening fluid. And so remember when I talk about velocity gradients, that's basically the slope uh, of this line is the velocity gradient, the change in velocity with respect to y uh, in the context of this, uh, this simple flow. So I could achieve a higher velocity gradient or a higher shear rate either by moving this top plate at a faster speed or by reducing the gap between these plates because then the change in velocity with h would become larger. Now let's see what happens if I plot these results in a different way. So here below I'm going to plot shear stress as a function of shear rate. So now instead of plotting uh, the viscosity coefficient versus the shear rate, I'm going to plot the stress versus the shear rate. And so one behavior that I might see would be if this curve has, is linear. And so this is the case for a Newtonian fluid. So again, the viscosity coefficient we can see is basically the slope of the shear stress versus shear rate curve, or the tau versus gamma dot curve. So if this value is constant, then that corresponds to a linear relationship between shear stress and shear rate, which is what's shown here. So for a Newtonian fluid, the shear stress versus shear rate behavior is a straight line uh, like shown here. 
for non-Newtonian fluids, then you can imagine that you see deviations from this linear behavior. So let's take a look at the case of a shear thinning fluid. So shear stress versus shear rate. So I told you that the viscosity coefficient represents the slope of the relationship between shear stress and shear rate. So if I look at this curve, so I have kind of one value of slope here at low shear rates. Then if I go to a higher shear rate and I look locally, what's the value of the slope of this curve, I can see that it's getting smaller. Right? The curve is getting more and more approaching horizontal. So the slope is actually decreasing as I go to increasing shear rate. And since viscosity coefficient is related to the slope of this curve, then this corresponds to shear thinning behavior because the viscosity is sort of, you can think of it as the local slope of the shear stress versus shear rate curve. So here the slope, you can imagine, is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Uh, so that means the viscosity is decreasing as a function of shear rate. Similarly, for a shear thickening fluid, uh, you can see the opposite, right? The, the slope locally, you know, may have a, a one value at low shear rates, and then it keeps increasing. If I plot the slope of this curve as a function of shear rate, I would get an increasing function. So that represents shear thickening behavior. So this viscosity uh, represents the slope of the shear stress versus shear rate curve. Now there's another kind of behavior that we can uh, observe uh, commonly, and that's shown here. Uh, and it's fluids that have a yield stress. So this means that we have to apply some force or some stress uh, above some minimum value in order to get any flow at all. If we don't apply any stress, or if we don't apply enough stress, then we won't be able to, uh, to initiate flow. But once flow begins, then, um, you know, again, we have some, some kind of uh, behavior. And, and it could be shear thinning, shear thickening, or Newtonian. If it's the case that above the yield stress, the flow exhibits Newtonian behavior, then that's uh, referred to as a Bingham plastic. Okay, let's try to summarize uh, some of the key features of these kind of non-Newtonian behaviors that I pointed out. Again, a, a Bingham plastic is an example of a, a yield stress fluid, so it will not flow until a certain stress is applied, a certain yield stress value is exceeded, and for the case of a Bingham plastic, once it starts to flow, the behavior is approximately Newtonian. That's the, the simplest possible model of a, a yield stress fluid. So typical examples of materials that exhibit this behavior might be ketchup, uh, toothpaste, things where you have to squeeze the bottle or the tube in order to start uh, the flow, in order to dispense the fluid. Just turning it upside down uh, is not enough to pour the fluid. You have to apply some additional, additional pressure or additional force uh, in order to get the flow going. Shear thinning behavior is probably, I'd say, some of the most common behavior that is observed uh, in non-Newtonian fluids. And this arises generally because the fluid contains components that are able to deform or rearrange in some way uh, to accommodate the flow. So as the, the flow becomes faster, or more correctly, I should say, the, the deformation rate uh, becomes faster. These components can change their shape uh, in order to, to accommodate that. And typical examples of these are, are polymers, uh, which are, uh, you may or may not know, a polymer is a, a long chain uh, molecule made of uh, repeat units, identical repeat units. Uh, so polymers, either in solution or in the melt, uh, micelles, uh, so surfactants like uh, soaps, for example, uh, that have uh, their molecules that have two different sides, a uh, uh, hydrophobic and a hydrophilic side. And so uh, one side, uh, for example, in water, the hydrophilic or the greasy sides will uh, of the molecules will cluster and form structures. But those structures can then be broken down uh, in, in shearing, uh, upon shearing. Uh, blood is another example of a non-Newtonian fluid uh, because it contains uh, blood cells and other components uh, that can uh, deform uh, at high shear rates. And so this is a picture. That here I'm showing these, uh, these curly shaped uh, things are representative of, of polymers, I guess, or, or any kind of structure that, that has some chain-like architecture. At equilibrium, these have kind of a random coil uh, shape. So in slow flows, uh, 
the, the molecules are not perturbed too much, too far away from their equilibrium shape. But as the shear rate or the deformation rate increases, then they can become stretched out or deformed or aligned uh, in a way that uh, accommodates the flow or essentially uh, results in, in a reduced viscosity. So, uh, you know, a typical example might be hair gel, uh, something like that. Um, you know, if you take some hair gel and rub it between your fingers uh, very slowly, you notice uh, one uh, sort of force that you need to apply to, to rub your fingers together. But then if you rub them very quickly, you might notice that that force uh, uh, becomes much smaller. So that's an example of shear thinning. Uh, hair gel micelles like liquid soap, liquid hand soap, uh, hand sanitizer, things like that uh, maybe contain these kinds of uh, uh, these kind of components that can um, that can deform to accommodate the flow and exhibit shear thinning behavior. Shear thickening behavior is uh, maybe uh, less common but uh, just as interesting. So in this case the fluid also contains components uh, just like shear thinning fluids, but these components are different in the sense that they're not able to deform or rearrange to accommodate the flow. So as the flow or deformation rate increases, they sort of become stuck or jammed uh, together. They're not able to, uh, to rearrange quickly enough to accommodate the flow, and the result of that is you observe an, an increasing viscosity. And so this is observed a lot in suspensions or slurries uh, of, uh, of particles. And a, a typical example, uh, as I'll show you uh, in a minute, is cornstarch and water uh, that exhibits this, um, this shear thickening behavior. So you can imagine that you know you have these particles uh, suspended in the fluid. Uh, if the flow is slow enough, then they're able to uh, to deform or rearrange to accommodate the flow. But if the the deformation rate uh, is very fast, then they just become stuck and they jam together. It's like a traffic jam and as a result uh, the viscosity increases and sometimes this effect can be uh, very dramatic. So one, one example is this uh, cornstarch and water and uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, videos you can see online on YouTube uh, where people make uh, uh, containers or fill uh, like a, a bath uh, tub or a, a kid's uh, pool with uh, cornstarch and water in a very um, uh, dense kind of suspension and it observes this shear thickening behavior in an interesting way where you can actually walk uh, on top of the surface even though it's a liquid it's like walking on water uh, due to this um, due to the shear thickening behavior. Okay, Here I can actually show you an example of the shear thickening behavior. Uh, recently at our university they had this uh, physics kind of fair where they had all these physics demonstrations and one of them was this non-Newtonian fluid made of this cornstarch and water solution. And so they made this kind of this trough uh, containing this non-Newtonian fluid and invited people to try to walk across it. So this is my son trying to do it on the first time and you can see that he didn't walk quickly enough so he sinks into this fluid and uh, I can tell you it's very messy stuff but you can see when they pick him up that even though it's, it's very thick it, it, it flows it, it kind of pours it's dripping off of his fingers but now eventually he got the hang of it and here he is trying it again going much faster and you can see that he's actually able to walk across this fluid as if it were a solid kind of like a bouncy solid but still uh, a solid nonetheless and you can see, man, I can tell you this stuff is really messy uh, because it's a very uh, dense uh, solution. But this is kind of in slow motion. You can see how the surface of the fluid deforms uh, because he's running quickly. This is actually a fast deformation rate. So the suspension, this dense suspension of these cornstarch particles is not able to rearrange itself quickly enough uh, in order to accommodate the flow and the viscosity increases and it behaves over these time scales at least essentially like a solid. You can find a lot of YouTube videos like this uh, if you look uh, online. There's even an episode I think of Mythbusters uh, uh, about that.